What if I told you there's a molecule from seaweed that can reduce inflammation, fight cancer and even extend lifespan, but barely anyone's talking about it? Well, let's dive into the world of Fukuidan. This seaweed is uh, eaten a lot by the Okinawans and they're some of the longest living people on earth. So let's cover what it is and its mechanisms of action and then I'll go into my own personal dosing protocols. So Fukuidan is a sulfated polysaccharide found in brown seaweed. It's known to activate AMPK, the counter regulator to mTOR, your growth pathway. And so yeah, it's a mild mTOR inhibitor. It also has senolytic properties as it, uh, it's been shown to reduce the markers of cellular senescence, you know, those zombie senescent cells. In particular, the inflammatory cytokine galactosidase has been noted that it reduces that and it crosses over into SIRT1 expression that's upregulated and that's been noted in hepatic studies and liver health is a weak area of mine. It's also known for its immune modulating properties, in particular boosting natural killer cell activity and this is something that obviously declines with age. Even certain drugs like rapamycin it might help with immunosenescence but it actually depletes you of natural killer cells, it being a, an immunosuppressant. And also other lifestyle factors like sleep play a big role in uh, natural killer cell production and it's something that I've massively increased my natural killer cells over time. Obviously if we're activating the SIRT1 gene that plays a key role in cellular repair and in C. elegans studies it's been shown that it actually extends lifespan on reducing oxidative stress and then in aged mice studies it's been shown that it reduced the incidence of cancer in those mice as well as improved survival and it makes sense you know, it being a fasting mimic so inhibiting mTOR slowing down cellular proliferation reducing the risk of mutations and it crosses over into other rodent studies with markers of uh, glucose you know insulin resistance as well as lipids too and they're very much associated with longevity Another area I'd like to focus on is inflammation. Fucoidin helps with that, IL-6, interleukin-6, and TNF-alpha, it's been shown to reduce them. And another one is interleukin-11, IL-11, and I'm really keen on that one because, for example, with interleukin-6, if you were to suppress that down, yeah, when you get into the bottom fifth percentile, that's great, but going too low with it, then you're not activating your immune system enough. Whereas with IL-11, it seems to be one of those uh, evolutionary relic uh, interleukins. It doesn't seem to have much in the way of beneficial effects. So you could suppress it down further still. But you know, in mice, they, they actually knock out the gene and the mice lead longer, healthier lives with more muscle mass. And IL-11 is very much a pro-fibrotic cytokine and that's very much associated with organ failure. And uh, yeah, so it works by inhibiting TGF beta, that signaling pathway, and then that so indirectly that will reduce IL 11. And it's been shown in emerging evidence that uh, Fucoidin helps with both liver, kidney, and lung fibrosis. And liver and kidneys, they're most definitely weak areas of mine. I made great strides with reversing my kidney age, but my liver has some work to do. I do various other things for IL-11 inhibition, reducing signaling, you know, even in the eyes with lutein and zeaxanthin. I take pentoxifilin, which again, that also helps with renal health as well, but also most definitely it helps with uh, heart health, you know, reducing cardiac fibrosis. And there's other things I do to reduce TGF beta signaling like peptides, but again, you know, your body, well, you can't do them for long periods of time because you build up antibodies, peptide antibodies. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. Another important aspect of Fucoidin is increased stem cell activity, especially hematopoietic as well as mesenchymal, as it's been shown to increase circulating CD34 cells, as well as enhance stem cell homing in, as well as mobilization, and it's believed to do this by modulating the pathway SDF1. And that translates into better wound healing, tissue regeneration, improved immune modulation as well. So let's talk about dosing for coiden and in particular the Maritech version of that, which is a cutting edge water extraction process, no harsh chemicals used. So it really does help preserve that sulfated polysaccharide. Most people use between one and 300 milligrams daily of it. I myself, I'm using 450 milligrams, but I'm only doing it on weekends. And the reason is I train really hard in the gym during the week. So I'm activating autophagy then, 
And so activating AMPK, I'm already doing that with my fasted exercise. So on weekends, I tend to eat the same amount of calories, but I'm not burning the same amount. Of course, in an ideal world, I'd be eating less calories on those rest days, but this channel's all about finding the best of both worlds, not living like a monk. And on top of rapamycin, which yes, is more for those hardcore longevity enthusiasts, it also complements other supplements I do very well, like I do uh, berberine phytozone, which is a highly bioavailable form of that, also do uh, spermidine and I do both of them only on weekends. And so you've got additional AMPK support with that berberine and then the spermidine can also induce autophagy. And back on AMPK, I also do alpha lipoic acid. I just do 100 milligrams, the, the R uh, stabilized form of it. And then uh, I do that 100 milligrams during the week and then on, on the weekends, I also do it uh, twice a day, the alpha lipoic acid for additional AMPK activation. And that protocol seems to really work for me. So I've got more mTOR expression during the week when I need my muscles to recover. And then on the weekends, I've got more autophagy and just letting the body have a slower healing process, more AL11 inhibition. And one final aspect of phacoidin I wanted to touch on was gut microbiome modulation as it acts as a prebiotic. And it's very structurally different to everything else. I do have a diverse diet, uh, you know, lots of different legumes, nuts, seeds, leafy greens, herbs, but seaweed is something I lack. And so that's very structurally different to everything else I have. And I do suffer with slight gut dysbiosis, lower microbiome diversity so i think over time this is going to really help me here as well as those organ system ages my liver kidneys and lungs i'll be doing updates on that so i think it complements all these other supplements very well there's obviously things i'm doing to support those organs further still so i get my phacoidin from time health really high-end supplements but very reasonably priced and I've been using them for over four years now, just they've been a very top-notch stuff. And then with my dosing protocol, it works out to under 10 pounds a month. I think that's worth it. Even if you're in that middle range, like what, 200 milligrams, I'm kind of like just below that with my 450 milligrams on weekends only. So under 10 pounds a month, I think it's worth it, this supplement having a whole array of health benefits. Yes, there needs to be more studies on it, but it is looking promising. So if you like that video, then check out this one on that berberine phytosome. It's 10 times more bioavailable. And for that reason, it seems to be more effective at improving insulin sensitivity, reducing those fasting glucose readings, as well as being a slight appetite suppressant. Thanks for watching. See you next time.